Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And happy Thanksgiving to all of you. A few, a few words before we begin our service today. You know, Thanksgiving is not actually a church holiday. It was actually a national holiday, although many times throughout history, the church has always had days of Thanksgiving. And uh, I thought I would begin today with just bring a, telling you a little bit about the history of Thanksgiving, <clears throat> they, at least as it's celebrated here in our country. You know, Canada also celebrates Thanksgiving. They celebrated a month earlier in October. I'm not quite clear as to the reasons behind that. And normally, our people here in America think of the pilgrims, I guess, on this day of Thanksgiving. But even that was not an official holiday. The official holiday didn't actually begin, in a sense, until the 1700s, until the Revolutionary War. There was a time following the war that uh, President Washington, about 10 years after the war had ended, um, made a proclamation for Thanksgiving Day to be celebrated within the United States at that time, but that was not necessarily an ongoing thing. Some of the presidents following him did the same thing, but not always. Abraham Lincoln then issued another proclamation in 1863. Now, if you know your history, that's in the middle of the Civil War. Uh, interesting time to have a prayer of thanksgiving or a service of thanksgiving, uh, that thought resonating throughout the land. But it was like the Revolutionary War, thanksgiving was an order, so also in the Civil War to keep our thoughts upon the Lord above. But even then, that did not continue necessarily every year. Presidents would do it, some didn't until about the 1900s. I think it was down to the time of uh, Roosevelt, uh, Franklin Roosevelt, where it now became a national holiday almost every year. And if you look on line sometime, you'll see that every president, as we get to Thanksgiving, will make a Thanksgiving proclamation, having a time of Thanksgiving for the country. I did not look this year to see what the proclamation said. But I have noted that over the years, the proclamation for Thanksgiving kind of lacked something. It lacked really the direction this way towards God, at least the true God. So I would like to take you back to the first proclamation that was made. This is even before George Washington's. This was done in 1777, so about one year after the Revolutionary War began. Then the Congress, the Congress made a proclamation to our nation about holding a Thanksgiving Day. And it's rather interesting to hear the wording that is given here at times, although we might want it more specifically, perhaps. They still mentioned whom to be thankful to, our Lord above. They also mentioned that our nation needs to be repentant of its sins, which I thought was interesting, and then also pointed where that repentance would be made and that would be in Christ Jesus as the Savior. So there are people nowadays that say ours is not a Christian nation or whatever, it wasn't founded that way. This proclamation tells you something completely different, especially at the time that it was held, right at the beginning of the Revolutionary War. So a committee had been organized by the Congress at that time, that would be the Continental Congress in November, to come with a recommendation. So they had prepared a recommendation to give to the rest of the members of Congress at that time and to set aside a, a, a day for public thanksgiving. And this is the report that they made, the findings of their report and their suggestion. For as much as it is the indispensable duty of all men to adore the superintending providence of Almighty God, to acknowledge with gratitude their obligation to him, for benefits received, and to implore such further blessings as they stand in need of, and it having pleased him in his abundant mercy, not only to continue to us the innumerable bounties of his common providence, but also to smile upon us in the prosecution of a just and necessary war for the defense and establishment of our unalienable rights and liberties particularly in that he has been pleased in so great a measure to prosper the means used for the support of our troops and to crown our arms with most signal success. 
It is therefore recommended to the legislative or executive powers of these United States to set apart Thursday, the 18th day of December, 1777, next, for solemn thanksgiving and praise, that with one heart and one voice, the good people may express the grateful feelings of their hearts and consecrate themselves to the service of their divine benefactor. And that together with their sincere acknowledgments and offerings, they may join the penitent confession of their manifold sins, whereby they had forfeited every favor and their humble and earnest supplication that it may please God through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior, mercifully to forgive and blot them out of his remembrance that it may please him graciously to afford his blessings on the governments of these states respectively and prosper the public council of the whole, to inspire our commanders both by land and sea and all under them with that wisdom and fortitude which may render them fit instruments under the providence of Almighty God, to secure for these United States the greatest of all blessings, independence and peace, that it may please him to prosper the trade and manufactures of the people and the labor of the husbandmen, that our land may yield its increase to take schools and seminaries of education so necessary for cultivating the principles of true liberty, virtue, and especially piety under his nurturing hand, and to prosper the means of religion for the promotion and enlargement of that kingdom which consisteth in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And it is further recommended that serve our labor and such recreation, as though at other times innocent, may be unbecoming the purpose of this appointment and be omitted on so solemn an occasion. And again, that is to be held in December of 1777. Our service today is outlined for you in the service bulletin. There will be times of uh, hymn singing, times of prayer that I'll ask you to join with me, and responses to the different lessons that we have for us this morning. So keep your bulletin before you as we go in our service. And for the beginning of our service today, we read Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us. We are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues throughout all generations. And we continue with the singing of our opening hymn, hymn number 517, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness.
please rise. And in taking out your bulletins to the first page on the inside of the bulletin, we'll join together in the opening prayer for today. We pray. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, your mercies were new to us every day of this past year. Although we have not deserved your favor because of our sin, yet in Christ you have forgiven us, and in your grace you provide abundantly for all our needs. We humbly come before you for ourselves and our nation. Forgive our sins for Jesus' sake. Send your Holy Spirit upon us. Turn our attention to your holy word. Give us eyes to see and to remember all that you do for us. Then we shall offer you thanks for everything. Bless us with grateful hearts and give us strength to serve you willingly in every time and place. We pray in Jesus' name, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our lesson this morning is based on Jesus' healing of the ten lepers. You'll find that in Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19, and we'll intersperse the different verses here and thoughts that are related there with some of the hymns for our Thanksgiving time. First, the lesson from Luke chapter 17. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. In Christ Jesus, their fellow redeemed in our Lord. How disappointed Jesus must have been. He had just delivered ten men from a terrible disease, but of those ten, only one came back to thank him. Think once what a disappointment that had to have been for him. Do you know what such disappointments feel like? I would imagine you probably do. Maybe it's not along the same scope as the one Jesus felt, but you know what disappointments are like. Dis disappointments can fill our lives in many different ways. Disappointments in family, disappointments in friends, disappointments in work, disappointments in ourselves. Disappointments come when things do not go the way that we had thought that they were going to go. We hope for something good to happen, but it doesn't seem to materialize the way that we thought that it would or hoped that it would. Then we're disappointed. But maybe, maybe the more important question for us is not to ask, are we disappointed? But perhaps it's, have we disappointed our God? To keep from disappointing him, it's very beneficial to remember all that God has done for us. So in that sense, it's really good to set aside a day, a day without any other maybe distractions to remember in thanksgiving, to see first of all, to remember and then to desire all the things that our Lord has in mind for his people as they come to him. And if we do that, we will not be disappointing him, nor will, will we find disappointment in ourselves. But we will give him thanks, for he helps us, no matter what, in all of our needs. 
if you would join with me in the response of reading the first one that you find in your bulletin, again on that first page on the inside. All of these responses are from psalms or prayers that we find in the scripture. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say this. Some wandered in desert wastelands. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. Then they cried out to the Lord in their distress, and he delivered them from their troubles. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and his wonderful deeds for all people, because he fills the desire of the hungry with good things. Some sat in darkness and the shadow of death, prisoners bound in misery and chains because they had rebelled against the words of God. Then they cried out to the Lord in their distress, and he delivered them from their troubles. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and his wonderful deeds for all people, because he cuts through iron bars. Some became fools through their rebellious way, suffering affliction. Then they cried out to the Lord in distress, and he delivered them from their troubles. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and his wonderful deeds for all people. Let them sacrifice thanks offerings and tell about his works with a joyful shout. Others went down to the sea in ships. A violent storm produced large waves. In their danger, their courage melted. Then they cried out to the Lord in their distress, and he brought them out of their troubles. He guided them to the port they desired. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and his wonderful deeds for all people. Let them exalt him and praise him. The upright see and rejoice, but all wickedness shuts its mouth. Whoever is wise, let him keep these things and remember them. Let them take to heart all the mercies of the Lord. And we join in the singing of our next hymn, 609. We praise you, O God, our Redeemer. That which is going to help us give him thanks as he helps us in all of our needs is twofold to begin with. It involves sight and remembrance. 
First, we need to see things that take place in our lives and then remember who it is and what he has done in order to relieve us of that distress. That's what made this one leper different from the rest that had come to Jesus and prompted him to immediately return to the Lord to give him thanks. He saw, and then he remembered much. But the others saw and remembered far too little. You know, leprosy was a horrible disease, especially in those days. With it, a sick person was doomed to this slow, painful death. Nobody wanted to be around them, lest they would catch that for themselves. So the illness made that leper, whomever it might be, an outcast from his family and from the rest of society. He had to live a lonely experience, cut off from his family, cut off from his friends, cut off from anyone except those companions who suffered with the same disease with whom he lived. But for these 10 lepers that day, when it came and Jesus was traveling down the road near them, they cried out with a united voice. It had to be united because the voice was one of the first things that such a leper would lose. So 10 of them had to shout out in order for Jesus to hear, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And his reply was just one simple command. Go, show yourself to the priests. But more than a command, in our Lord's mouth, that was really an invitation for them, an invitation to, for them to see something in him, a challenge to see more in Jesus than they perhaps at first saw. He didn't touch them like he touched a lot of the other people who meet healed. He didn't put anything on them, as he did with some of the others, the blind especially, whom he had healed. He didn't even raise his hand in blessing and wave his hand over the spot so that they would be cured, like you might see some faith healer do today. He just said, go, show yourselves to the priests. And they did. And while they were on their way, they were healed. Seeing this, The one immediately turned back in order to fall at Jesus' feet and to praise him. Only one actually saw what had happened. Why only the one? Didn't the others see that they also had been healed of this very dreaded disease? Well, of course they saw that because their bodies were now different than they had been for a long time. They saw that they were saved from a horrible living death. They saw in themselves the exact same things that this one Samaritan had seen in his healing. But that is all they saw, themselves and their changed state. And in that they saw too little, for in looking only to themselves they did not see their benefactor, or consider who it was who had brought this tremendous healing to them in their lives. It was the Lord Jesus. If they had truly seen him, and if they had truly seen what had taken place in their lives through him, they too would have immediately returned in order to glorify him. But they saw too little in Jesus, and they remembered too little of the great difference that the Lord Jesus as the Savior makes in people's lives. And there, dear friends, is one of the sad causes of our own ingratitude at times, and that ingratitude that truly affects our society and the world at large. You know, just watch for it this Thanksgiving Day. You'll hear many expressions of thanks, especially if you listen to one of the football games that will go on but you will probably not hear whom that thanks is to be directed to. Sadly, too many of those expressions will neither see nor remember nor acknowledge the hand of the one who blesses them and helps us in all of our needs. Where would people be without the Lord Jesus? 
Well, God give us hearts that see and minds that remember all that he means to us, not just for the body, but more importantly, for the soul. That's the first thing that we need in order to give him proper thanks. It takes sight and remembrance. If you would join with me in the second response of reading, following part one, it takes sight and remembrance on the insert in your bulletin. Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. He pardons all your guilt. He heals all your diseases. He redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with mercy and compassion. He satisfies your life with goodness so that your youth is renewed like the eagle's. The Lord performs righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in mercy. He will not always accuse. He will not keep his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve. He does not repay us according to our guilty deeds. But the Lord's mercy is from eternity to eternity over those who fear him. His righteousness is with those who remember his precepts to obey. Bless the Lord, everything he has made in all places where he rules. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And we join in the singing of our next hymn, 623. O bless the Lord, my soul. And there's one other thing that sets this man apart, the Samaritan man who had been healed of his leprosy, sets him apart from the rest of them. Let's just call it desire. He desired to receive more from the hand of the one who was going to heal him, desiring more of the Savior. In a way, you could say that the nine who didn't return to give Jesus thanks desired too little. They desired too little because they were satisfied with what they had received, the one thing that they got, the healing. They came to have their bodies rid of this terrible disease, and they received that. And when that happened, they left, and they went away. No greater desire did they have to see in the Lord Jesus. 
Now, could there be something there which helps us understand our own hearts when perhaps we are filled with more ingratitude than we are thankfulness? Are we looking for too little from him? Are we desiring too little? That's short-sightedness. The Savior wants to give us so much more than only providing for the temporal and the material needs that we have in this life for our bodies. He came to give us life in him as the Savior that would continue on forever. He said, I have come that they may have life and that they may have life more abundantly. Literally, that more abundantly in the Greek means a surplus of life. The picture is that of a cup that's being filled up with a pitcher of water. And as the water nears the brim, the one who is pouring does not stop pouring, but it spills over the brim. It reminds you of the words of the psalmist, my cup runneth over. You know, thinking of that, my cup runneth over. If you take a cup of water and it's only about this much full, it's said that the pessimist sees such a cup and what does he say? It's half empty. Well, the optimist who's supposed to have a more positive outlook on life looks at that same cup and he says, it's half full. <laughs> what does the Christian say? No, it doesn't say that. <laughs> What does the Christian say? My cup runneth over from the psalm. That's a surplus of life. No matter where we might be in life, my cup runneth over, even when it appears to many others that it doesn't. Although many will speak this Thanksgiving Day of the blessings, the thankfulness for those blessings that they have, sadly, they won't speak of the one necessarily to whom that thanks should be given and is owed. They will see too little. They will remember too little. And they will desire too little of the Savior. But the heart that will see and remember him for whom he is and everything that he brings to us, and above all desires those eternal blessings that can only flow to us through Christ, who gave his life on the cross for us. When they desire those blessings, that heart will be enriched then in every way. It will receive much more from his hand. So Lord, always help us to see, to remember, and above all, to desire all that you wish to give us in your mercy and grace from now into eternity. And then we will truly say, give thanks to the Lord. He is the one who helps us in all of our needs. God grant that in our lives of faith for Jesus' sake. Amen. And now in turning to your bulletin one more time, if you would join with me, on the second page of the insert under part two, it takes desiring more of the Savior. This is spoken by Jonah as the Lord delivered him when he allowed the fish to swallow him. In my distress, I called to the Lord and he answered me. From the belly of the grave, I cried out and you heard my voice. You threw me into the depths. I said, I have been driven away from your sight. Nevertheless, I will once again look toward your holy temple. Waters engulfed me so that I was near death. The earth locked me behind its bars forever. But you brought my life up from the pit, O Lord my God. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered the Lord. My prayer came to you. Those who cling to worthless idols... Forsake the mercy that is theirs. But I, with a shout of thanksgiving, will indeed sacrifice to you. Salvation belongs to the Lord. And we join in the singing of our next hymn, Hymn 508, Sing to the Lord of Harvest.
And now we bring our offerings to the Lord for his service. In our offerings today, Thanksgiving Day, we have over the years made it a tradition with us since there are so many others who have helped us when we began as a mission congregation years ago, helped us with their own offerings. We have given this Thanksgiving offering to one of the home missions so that others might also receive that blessing and be able to spread this gospel message to others. So that is where our Thanksgiving offering will go today, to some home mission endeavor, some work that is being done. Please rise for prayer, and if you would turn in your bulletins, again, to the second part of the insert, we have a responsive prayer of thanksgiving. Please join with me in this. Heavenly Father, when you open your hand, you satisfy the desires of every living thing. May your name be praised and your grace glorified. Today, we remember with joy the gifts you provide for us. Again and again, you pour on us all that we need for daily living, health, strength, companionship, and all our material blessings. We thank you especially for the eternal blessings you have given us through your Son. It is true that every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights. Since everything is good and perfect according to your gracious will, even the difficult things that cause us suffering or pain, forgive us for not remembering that your mercies never fail us, heal our complaining and ungrateful hearts, prevent us from letting Satan entrap us with guilt for what you give us, keep our sights on things above, not on earthly things. On this Thanksgiving day, pour out your spirit on us. Bless us with a faith that seeks first your kingdom and your righteousness. Assure us that you will supply all our needs as well. Make us bold to give us generously as you have given to us. Be with your people wherever they might be on this holiday. Protect those who are traveling Provide for all who have been displaced by storms or war. Give strength to those who are helping to restore and rebuild. Sustain the sailor and soldier, the fireman and officer, and all who serve by giving of themselves to protect the welfare of our people. Heal the sick, cheer the hearts of the lonely, comfort those who sorrow, and look with compassion on the poor and needy. And hear us, dear Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Fill us today and every day with a humble, happy, and grateful faith that sincerely prays. Give thanks to the Lord always for everything. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Amen. And we join in the prayer the Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. 
Amen. And now receive with believing hearts the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Amen, amen, amen. The congregation may be seated for the singing of our closing hymn, 597. Now thank we all our God. For my family and myself, I wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving in our Lord and a pleasant weekend that lies ahead. Should be good weather until Sunday. <laughs> so, <laughs> happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Pass that off to your family, too. Thank you. Thank you.